Hey, what's going on? Chris Rosakowski here from the email Um, I wanted to present today an email that I wrote and do a little bit of a breakdown. I find that teaching with examples is something that just helps me. Um, hopefully it'll help you too. So I was thinking about what I should show and I want to show you this email that I wrote for carnivore snacks recently. Now, if you know about me, you know, I do most of my work in the e-commerce world. Um, you know, carnivore snacks, one of my longtime clients, but most of the clients that I write for sell physical products. I've done a lot of digital product stuff too, but I really prefer uh, physical product brands, e-commerce brands, direct consumer brands, typically consumables are my favorite to write for. Um, and the reason why is because a lot of the copy principles that, um, you know, that are evident in direct response work really, really well in the e-commerce world. And a lot of times people will think about like e-commerce emails and they'll think, oh, I just need like a cool picture and like a buy button or a discount button or whatever. And, you know, that could work, obviously, like people do that, but I don't think it's the best approach. And I think that it's a real opportunity for brands who actually lean in and use good copy in their emails and tell a story and, you know, do all the direct response, use all the direct, direct response, excuse me, direct response principles that we know work in other domains like info marketing, digital products, even SaaS. Um, so that's what I want to show here. So this email, um, it was kind of funny. It was inspired by a one-star review. And a lot of times, especially like in the e-commerce world, you know, reviews are so big. People are, they like want to hide it. You know, everyone's scared of getting canceled. Everyone's scared of getting shit on. And it's like, okay, how do we turn this into an opportunity to make sales and make a lot of sales? And how do we turn this into an opportunity to rally our tribe and rally our troops uh, against this common enemy and throw rocks at this common enemy. If you've read Blair Warren's One Sentence Persuasion course, uh, he says there's five things that you know persuade people. One of those things being uh, throwing rocks at common enemies. So that's what I wanted to do here. Now, obviously, this email is very well designed. My client uses a uh, email agency who does the design. I actually don't do that myself, but a lot of times I'm brought in to you know write copy um, for you know just because I kind of help develop the voice. Uh, over the years, I started working with them since they were pre-revenue, and uh, I've been working with them for about four years now. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, we started off here, subject line, in quotes, I do not recommend this product. Which, again, like, if you look at, like, the common, you know, e-commerce playbook, most people be like, no, don't write, the, you know, don't write anything like that. Like, you always have to present your product in a positive light. The funny thing is, we, we do do that. Um, but it's kind of arresting, and it's kind of like... You don't really see that in the inbox too often, right? Like, I do not recommend this product coming from a company talking about themselves. So it's a bit of a pattern interrupt, right? Um, now here, you know, they have this header, we're not for everyone. There's a buy button, a little GIF or animation. So then this is this is where my copy started. So we get lots of awesome reviews from our customers, except for this one guy who is not too happy with this carnivore snack experience. And then we actually took the review from the website and put it in here. Uh, showing it as one star snacks for rich people, just an average guy that's not rich. Um, I think that he actually signed, if I remember correctly, I think he actually did sign his name like that uh, in the review on the website, which is pretty funny. So obviously this guy's being a bit of a dick, right? Um, it's funny because there's thousands and tens of thousands of carnivore snacks customers, people who, you know, who use this product all the time. It's a big company. Um but this guy's obviously being an asshole about it, right? So I said, boy, oh boy, where do I even begin? The truth is he's absolutely right. Our products are high end. We sell premium, regeneratively raised meat sourced from American ranches and farms, we make the best tasting, most flavorful meat snacks on the market, and we ship them directly to your front door so you don't even have to get off the couch. So the first thing that we're doing is we're kind of like meeting this guy where he's at. It's like, you're right. They are. <laughs> they are expensive, right? We're not hiding that. Most brands but oh, no, it's not, you know, if you do this comparison and, you know, break it down this way. And, and like most brands almost want to kind of apologize, right? If, if someone kind of catches them, right? Like, oh, these are just rich people. It's like, no, 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 we don't do that. We say, yeah, you're damn right. Like we're agreeing, agree and amplify, right? Um, okay, let's continue. By the way, these highlights are just because I, in the, from the search query, that's why it's showing up like that. That's not a stylistic thing. Um, so I said, you can literally tap, tap, tap a few buttons on your computer phone and bags of carnivore snacks magically show up to your house before floating magically in your mouth. Okay. That last bit is somewhat exaggerated, but you get the point. Is it true that carnivore snacks are only for rich people? Must you wear a monocle and a top hat and live in an English country manner to afford carnivore snacks? So obviously what we're doing now is like, we're taking the, you know, agree and amplification, agreeing and amplification 
to the extreme and we're almost like ridiculing this guy like making fun of him right it's like must wear a monocle and top hat and live in an english country manner like obviously you don't have to so now we're kind of like laughing at the guy right because of how ridiculous his statement was we want to meet him or you know meet people who have this mindset with an equal level of ridiculousness if not an exceeding amount right uh, well, I could be wrong, but I don't think that's the case. There are five servings of snacks in each bag. That's a pound before dehydrated. So before it's dehydrated, it's like a pound of meat that goes down and it, it becomes like a five ounce bag of the highest quality meat money can buy. An entire bag is a lot of meat. You will be beyond full if you eat the whole bag. And when you do eat carnivore snacks, you're not eating a bunch of bullshit empty calories you find in 95% of the foods in your local supermarket. So yeah, we actually wrote the word bullshit. I was like, oh, my spam, my spam filters. Oh no, we use the S word. Like who fucking cares? <laughs> right? I mean, I don't worry about that stuff. Um, I know some people do. Some people are like, no, you can't curse in your emails. What if someone gets mad? Like I don't fucking care, right? So uh, I don't think our customers care. And if people do get offended, then they're probably not going to be good customers anyway. So whatever, right? Um, so yeah, here, what are we doing here? So we're kind of like explaining like, yeah, it is a lot of money and there's a lot of meat too, right? So now that we've kind of like made fun of this guy a little bit, now we're kind of transitioning the message, right? Um, you don't have to cook them. You can take them anywhere. And you know that carnivore snacks are, are free from nasty chemicals, pesticides, antibiotics, and God knows what else you find in the meat in your supermarket. So now we're doing a bit of a positioning statement to kind of be like, yeah, here's why it's so freaking expensive, right? And here's why it's a good thing that it's expensive. So again, we're just agreeing, agreeing, agreeing. So buy button, product image. Next section, priorities. Snacks for rich people? Perhaps. That's one way to look at it. Most, and then, you know, here we do a little bit of like the comparison because I think at this point of the message, it's okay to do that now that we, we didn't lead off with this, right? We kind of led making fun of the guy first and now we're going down into the actual comparison piece. Uh, most people have no problem dropping $200 on a bar tab, which honestly, some people drop more. Some people will go to the nightclub and they'll spend $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 on a, on a VIP table, right? And then they'll see a $30 or $35 bag of, of regeneratively raised, you know, carnivore snacks. And then, oh my God, that's expensive. It's like, no, you're just an asshole the way you spend your money. So don't get mad at us because you're an idiot, right? Um, or buying hundreds of dollars of canola oil-laced food products. That's the thing too. You go to the supermarket, you get a couple boxes of anything processed and it's easily over the cost, easily $35, $45, $50, $60, $70 worth of stuff in your cart just getting a handful of items, right? And a lot of that stuff is bullshit. It's not as good quality as carnivore snacks. Or spending hundreds each month on vegetables that sit in back of the fridge only be thrown out the moment you come home from the store. So like one thing about this market in particular, the carnivore, not so much the paleo, really more of like the carnivore diet type market who obviously makes up a large segment, not the entire uh, customer base, but a large segment. Um, they don't need any vegetables, right? So like anytime we make fun of vegetables, especially like when we make fun of vegans and vegetarians, that always goes over well. But, you know, if we talk shit about eating vegetables, that's like a big rallying cry uh, piece of copy as well. So, and even like if you are someone who eats vegetables, which like if you do like whatever, I don't, I don't care, it doesn't bother me. Um, we've all had that experience. It's like, you know, you have a, a thing of broccoli or a thing of spinach in the vegetable drawer and then you go to the supermarket, you know, the next week and then you come back and you throw out the old one because you never made it and then you put the new one in. I saw a meme one time about it said like the weekly changing of the guard. <laughs> It's just someone like throwing out the old spinach and putting a new one in. Um, and that happens all the time, you know, uh, depending on, you know, if you get too busy to cook or forget or whatever. Right. So like, OK, what what is a how much food are you throwing out that you're just spending money on? You're not even eating right compared to something that you're actually going to devour. So uh, but sure, paying thirty five dollars to fuel your body with one of the healthiest foods on the planet is too expensive. And I like using this. I don't know what it's called when you do the uppercase, lowercase. I just call it like the SpongeBob lettering because there's that SpongeBob uh meme that you guys have probably seen when you know it's like he'll it's like him imitating with like the weird voice i don't know how to explain it in meme form but perhaps you've seen the mocking spongebob meme i think it's called so i like to use this a lot in my copy not everyone gets it sometimes people are like why are you wording it like that they haven't seen the meme so i don't think it like takes anything away uh but for people who have seen the meme it's like a dog whistle it's really funny and they, they get it instantly and they know it's like mocking uh people so um, anyway, you know what? It comes down to priorities, really. How much is your life worth to you? So now we like get down to like some real brass tacks, like comparison, like, you know, people with diabetes spend an average of $16,000 a year in medical treatment, medical costs associated with cardio cardiovascular disease and other obesity related issues are even higher. But yes, again, your health is not worth $35. What a rip off. So we're doing a bit of like the price anchoring by comparing it to the cost of not 
I'm not saying like this product cures diabetes. I'm not doing that whole thing. Obviously not, right? Of course not. Um, but what we're doing here is like, well, if you don't take care of your health and you don't spend money on your health, you're going to spend money as a result of not taking care of your health. So you're going to be spending money either way. It's just, do you want to live healthy or do you want to get really sick and then try to have to spend your way back to good health? Um, so anyway, whatever you do, do not make it. And this is like super like high, like a lot of sarcasm right here, right? Uh, which I think people get. Whatever you do, do not make an investment into building a stronger, healthier, more resilient body. Please just eat the bugs, live in a pod, take your prescription medication like a good little boy or girl. Do not fight back. Do not dare waste a single penny on your own health and well-being. And obviously, like, especially if you hang out on, you know, X a lot. Uh, and, you know, if you're in like the um, esoteric health, right-wing bodybuilder circles, if you hang out there, you know, there's the whole memes about, you know, Klaus Schwab, uh, Klaus Schwab and the WF. You know, the year is 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Eat the bugs, live in the pod. So obviously, like, we like to inject a lot of that language just to talk shit about those people because they're fucking terrible people. Um, so again, another rallying cry for our tribe. Okay. So we, we kind of like, in case we have some, you know, midwit 105, 110 IQ people who didn't pick up on the sarcasm, I actually say, I hope you can sense my sarcasm here. The truth is this person is right. Carnivore snacks are not for everyone. So what we're doing here is we're kind of like velvet roping the product a little bit, which I don't think is a bad thing to do, right? Because if you do buy it, and like I said, there's tens of thousands of customers, maybe even more people who bought, tried carnivore snacks over the course of their life. Um, it's like being in an elite club. It's like, why are country clubs? Why does everyone want to be in a country club? Because there's such a high barrier to entry. I'm not saying a bag of carnivore snacks is the same as that, but that it's a similar effect on a much lower level, right? It's like the velvet rope effect. It's like everyone wants to be behind the velvet rope. They want to be in the club. Once they're in the club, they want to be in the VIP booth or they want to be in the DJ booth or whatever it is, right? Like there's always another level. Um, and you could do that with your products. So we say they are, excuse me, they're not for people who are content with living an average life. They're not an average snack for average people. So again, like if you don't want to be average, like who wants to be average at anything, right? No one wants to be average. People are average, but they don't want to be. Everyone wants to aspire to something better, right? So again, it's like one of those psychological mechanisms where it's getting people to self-identify with the image that they hold in their mind, the ideal image for their life, right? It's like, well, I can't just sit here and be average. I have to do something. And obviously we want to lead them to the call to action of buying carnivore snacks. So we, re we reiterate the, the USP. Carnivore snacks are premium cuts of meat sourced from the best farms in the country, and they pack the most insane taste and texture of any meat snack you'll ever try. They actually do. If you haven't tried carnivore snacks, man, you're missing out. They're so freaking good. Uh, and I'm obviously, I'm somewhat biased in saying that, but they really are good. Uh, there's no point in being average. Being average sucks. Life's too short to be unhealthy and unhappy. The choice is yours. Haters stay mad. No, buy some snacks, you rich bastard. Shop now. <laughs> so... We kind of, you know, like make a joke out of it at the end, like buy some snacks, you rich bastards. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's essentially that's the email. And then there's, you know, some call to action stuff down here. But this is like writing with balls, right? Like you don't want to be timid when you write, because if you're just like plain Jane vanilla, OK, you get lost in the inbox. Like maybe some people read your stuff. But if you want outsized results, you need outsized copy. You need to think outside the box. You need to be brave. You need to be courageous with what you write. You need to be brave with how you sell. Like Dan Kennedy says, you know, you never, I think it was Dan Kennedy. He talks about like not selling from your heels, right? Like selling, leaning into the sale, right? Like going for it, really going for it. So that's something, you know, I hope you got some lessons from this. Um, and yeah, so thank you Nabil for organizing this and for inviting me. And thank you guys for listening. And uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about me, you can go to my website. Um, you can go to the email copywriter.com. You get on my list, get a free copy of my book. And uh, that's it. All right. Talk soon. Later.